Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Ernie. And this is Budget Nerds. Who is all in your mind? You are not alone. No, you are not. Well, Ernie, today we have been doing Budget Nerds for two whole My goodness. years. What do you think of that? Two years! <laughs> that went by really fast. fast. August 24th, August 24th, 2020 was the first episode. And this one's coming out right around that time. So yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a while. It's been a couple of years we've been doing this. So we thought we'd take an episode and just kind of look back. It's kind of like, you know, those like 90s sitcoms when they'd have like a clip episode, you know, it's going to be like that basically, except not terrible. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> and I'm not going to be splicing <laughs> clips from the previous videos. So that's a little bit too technical for me. <laughs> no, that's way, that's too much. That's way too much work. We're not, we're but we will reminisce. Yes, but we'll talk about absolutely. Them. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to take a minute and, and reminisce, talk about the things that we've learned. Um, and yeah, talk about you know, why did we start this show back in 2020? I mean, everything was uh, was crazy. Everything was weird. And we were trying out all sorts of new content. You had just started. Yeah, and Aaron actually, right time, Aaron, right? the lead educator, came to me and said, all right, we got to find something else for you to do because you can't just be teaching workshops, you know, the entire time. You're just you're going to get burnt out. And so brainstorming, we were thinking about oh, that's true. You know, a YouTube show. Is there a podcast? We're like, oh, how about let's try budget nerd right let's do something that appeals to the YNAB veterans like the folks that have been using it all the time and we'll just uh, turn the mic on and start nerding out about the budget not really having any idea what the reception would be yeah I feel like um even now but especially back then a lot of our content was for people that don't use YNAB yet trying to you know gather them into the fold it is marketing after all right uh but also for brand new folks, like how to set up a budget, how to think about uh, your money differently, things like that. But we didn't have a whole lot of content for veterans, for old wine nabbers who want to nerd out on their budget a lot. And man, you know, at first I wasn't so sure because I was like, well, I feel like you know, these people got it down. Like, are we gonna be able to teach them anything? But I have learned so much. I feel like we've taught you guys so much. I've heard so many comments of people saying, you know, it really reinvigorated my love for budgeting, watching some of these episodes. Um, it got me interested in budgeting again because, you know, sometimes budgeting gets a little stale. You kind of get into a routine and you kind of plot along, you know. And so if you have new ideas to kind of come in and, and break it up a little bit, it can be really healthy. Yeah. And right away, we kind of felt like, oh, we're hitting on something here because it was Rachel. You remember that mm -hmm. comment? Um, I, yes. I am not alone. Like she was excited to find this <laughs> yes. community that could nerd episode, out. Right? Yeah, I think it was the first episode. And I think we can all relate to that. Like, our, you know, our spouse, our partner, our coworkers, like they're sick of he uh, hearing us talk about YNAB. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, go somewhere yeah. else. But hey, we can talk about it all day long here. No one's ever getting bored. Yeah, I love it. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of those things where... Um, it's kind of hard to talk about money, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to have a community around this unless it's with strangers on the internet. <laughs> I feel like it's actually a little bit easier sometimes, <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, we just want to have, you know, a way for people who are uh, totally sold on budgeting and totally doing the thing uh, to be able to talk and be able to have shared language. So that's what this is all about. And I, I love what Rachel said. I, I we are not alone. I, I, that we, that was the first, one of the very first comments and it became our intro. You are not alone. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. We're like, oh, this is, this is spot on. So yeah, let, let's talk about some things that we've learned. Maybe share some inside jokes that we've developed over the past couple of years. And then we have a giveaway at the very end. So excited about oh, that. Oh, yes. Stay tuned for that. There you go. Yes. Yeah, so I thought we'd just talk about some of our favorite memories, some things that we've learned the past few years. Ernie, why don't you start? What's something that you learned the past, past couple of years of budget? Nerds? Okay. I think this is probably the biggest one. And it's super nerdy because it was when I just finally decided on a name for our household category. So I think this came from oh, the yeah. true expenses deep dive. And I was lamenting how I just did not know what to call this category that we use for clean household cleaners, shampoo, you know, all that kind of stuff. I had been calling it household goods, but it just 
it didn't fit and it, it caused confusion with Christy. She's like, what is this category? Does this go in here? Does this go somewhere else? And, and then it was in the comments, Brian, budget nerd, Brian said, we call it uh, consumables. And then they have another category they call durables. And it just, it, it, it oh, instantly clicked with me. Right. Okay. So the shampoo consumable household cleaner consumable new curtains that's a durable right you know uh-huh. and so it just it uh-huh. clicked changed the name in the budget and it's just been gold ever since so, so it's really was, been like it was a big win it's separated into two yeah i love that well i found my name too because you were i think i had miscellaneous and then i had household and then i had miscellaneous households <laughs> you could put them together and then i had but I landed on sundries <laughs> uh, from a, I think that was from a, from a video from, from, uh, from Hannah. Yeah. And I really like sundries a lot, but I really like separating it into two categories. Have we talked about this already, Ernie, or is this, is this something you saw in a comment that I didn't see? No, I think we have talked about it a little bit. I, I mentioned before okay. that I, I like the idea of durables yeah. because that also solves the problem of like, I never know what to call. Like, like I have a home decor category, but go. like, it's kind of tricky to decide if that's like, optional like kind of more optional things like i don't know like pictures for the wall as opposed to like curtains or blinds mm-hmm. or something like that you know so that yeah that kind of hmm, durables i, like I mean it's I like such I thought about a that. small change but i've been budgeting for seven years right so i am pr- i'm pretty that's what yeah, i'm pretty about. dialed that's in. what budget nerds is all about right so there's not really <laughs> any big thing you know, for me to change about my budgeting, it's just these little things now that where I tweak it and I'm like, oh, that just, it makes so much sense. So I love it. Nice. Nice. Um, I'll go. I learned how to implement profit first accounting in YNAB. Remember that episode we had with Laura? I do. About uh, budgeting, using YNAB for bit small business. Yes. I learned all about that. And it might come in handy here because my wife is is thinking about starting a business. Well, she is. She, she's starting it. She isn't charging people yet. She's kind of in a research phase of this this product she's working on. Ah. And I think I think this is going to be a thing. It kind of came out of uh, the time when she was was off work for a little while. She was like thinking about different things. And uh, I think it's become, become a thing. And Eventually, we're probably going to need a separate account, and I'm I'm, I'm already nerding out. I'm like, oh, I can run the budget. <laughs> right? I'll be your I accountant. I can run the business budget <laughs> for this so much I'll a be month. Pulling up, <laughs> right? I'll be pulling up that episode. I think. I think Nick True has a good ep- a good uh, video on he does. um profit first with up too. So yeah, that would be. I think I'll be pulling those those up to to learn about it a little more. So yeah, definitely definitely a good one. Excellent. Uh, another thing that stood out over the past two years, and again, it's just a minor change that made a really big difference in our budget, it came from you, how you and your wife separate out personal eating out and family eating out. So oh, yeah, yeah. previously, I all eating out was just run through one eating out category, but it just didn't feel right because you know i work from home i can eat out for lunch a lot more than my wife can and so i'm taking Mm -hmm. these dollars from the category and she doesn't have access to them or an opportunity to spend them and then you mentioned oh if i go out to eat by myself that comes from my personal spending category i'm like of course it does that just makes so much sense it saves a lot of conflict it does (laughs) and the marriage it uh, it also just uh, now i don't feel guilty right and it was always that you know, you swipe the card and feeling a little guilt and like, Hey, I went out to mm-hmm. eat, you know, you should go out to eat sometime too. So you can use some of the money we have. <laughs> you're like, do you ever do that? Where you're like pushing Chrissy <laughs> to go do something. Cause you've done it and you want to assuage your guilt a little bit. Right. Yeah. I, I do that kind of thing too. <laughs> but now I don't even think about <laughs> or it. Like, sometimes I'll be like going through a drive through and, uh, I'll, I'll know like, okay, if I go through this drive through, I'm gonna have to use my personal spending. Right. But then I'll like call Caitlin. <laughs> I'll call Caitlin or text her and be like, "Hey, do you want something <laughs> oh. from the you know from the Chick Fil A or whatever?" And if she says yes, then I'm like, "Sweet, <laughs> d- d- family dining out category, perfect." <laughs> because yes. you know we're both getting food. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, do you want to go to the cities to eat out? Okay, this isn't eating out. This is now a trip. So we're taking out of the trips category. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, always oh, manipulating the, the budget. <laughs> but yeah, I, it's funny. It's like these. It, we we make it all up anyway. Like and we then we like we make up rules to get around our own rules. <laughs> okay, but. well, well, I'll keep talking because that actually leads into the next thing that stood out over the past two years as I was reflecting was was the arbitrary rules. So Jesse oh, yeah. did a podcast on arbitrary budget rules. And I'm like, oh my goodness, those are totally a thing. And it was really fun to just kind mm-hmm. of think about what rules have I just started implementing really for no rhyme or reason, right? They just kind of came about and those are the, the arbitrary rules that I adhere to. And then we did that episode yeah. too. So I, I, I don't know. I really liked that episode. Looking back, I think that might be one of my most favorite episodes because I feel like it's it's the it's just what budget nerds is all about. Is like we we kind of set these parameters for ourselves and they're arbitrary. But then like because we're so nerdy, we like hold fast to them. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then hold fast to them so much that we create these little scenarios where we get around our own rules, <laughs> even though we <laughs> we made the rules. We can change the rule if we want. Yeah, yeah. So yeah it's it's a funny thing. It's a funny thing. I love it. Um. I liked this idea, Ernie, where you talked about increasing your retirement by 1% every quarter. Mm. You did that for a little while. I am, I actually just met with a financial advisor um, just a couple of days ago and we were looking at stuff and, and he was like, yeah, you know, you might want to look at increasing this a little bit. And I was like, okay, yeah. And I, I, I really liked the idea, but at the time I was like, well, I think we're, we're good with retirement. And we were. But uh, looking back at it now, we're like, maybe we should increase it a little bit. And so I might might do that. I might do it all at once. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about ways to increase retirement. So okay. that, could, that could come in. But that was a really cool idea where you just kind of increase it slowly so you don't really feel it, right? Yeah, that came from Jesse. And I started that because I felt like I was really behind in retirement. I mean, I was well into my 30s, uh, just had made some big career moves. And at the time, I think I was maybe contributing 1% for, to my account. Mm. And I'm like, I, I need to jumpstart this, um, but just couldn't bite off a whole bunch. And then just to drop the episode about, hey, just 1% a quarter, you're barely even going to notice that. And you keep doing that year after year. And eventually you're going to get to a spot where, you know, you're like, you're contributing a pretty good chunk every single month. And so... Yeah, it it really did happen and I'm really glad I made that that change. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Oh, and I think I've asked you this before, but when when you say increase by 1%, do you mean you mean 1% of your income every time, right? Not 1% of the amount you were contributing. You you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Does that make sense? You're so not like I'm, increasing it by If I'm contributing <laughs> 3% of each paycheck to retirement, then in three months, I'm going to change it to contribute 4%. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not like 1% of 3% more. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm right, saying? Right, right. <laughs> that would take a long time. Yeah. Now that I, now that I say it, uh, that I, of course you're doing it that way because otherwise it'd be, uh, it, would, it would take a long time for that to ramp yeah, up. I mean, compound interest. And there's off, no math involved here. Like it's <laughs> logging into my retirement websites and you know bumping that up one percent mm-hmm. okay cool yeah i like that i'm gonna think about that i might do it all at once in our next budget meeting we might have to make some adjustments but uh if, if it's i'll see how painful it is like because there's there's a good there's a good chunk of money i want to put more toward retirement a month okay and i'm not sure because caitlin got this new job and we're not sure how it's going to play out it's a slight increase in pay not a whole okay. lot but there's a little bit. I'm not sure how it's going to play out. Like, you know, like with taxes and everything, you never, you're not, you're never quite sure exactly how much more you're going to get paid when you get a raise until you actually get the paycheck. So, I'm, I'm going to see if it's really painful to do this increase. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I'll spread it out with that one percent rule. Yeah, and you could use the one percent rule for anything: debt pay down, giving. So, mm-hmm. I actually we got to a spot with retirement contributions where, like, okay, we're really comfortable with this. And now I've taken that 1% and I'm upping what I paid to the mortgage every month. And so trying to accelerate that just oh, a little yeah. bit. And that was one of your arbitrary rules that you've broken. Now. Right. Because you said you, you one of your arbitrary rules is you don't I'm pay not extra, paying on, the extra on the mortgage. Oh, now I want to pay extra <laughs> on the mortgage. 
That is totally me just <laughs> hey. changing on a whim. No, part of the arbitrary rules. You can <laughs> you can change your rules, and there you go. Uh, all right, what's something else you've learned? Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, I had no idea. I was so opinionated about emojis. My goodness, we oh. have talked a lot about emojis. <laughs> There's been internal debates it. here at YNAB on Slack about the proper use of emojis in the categories and groups. Mm-hmm. And Before or after one, one emoji per category, multiple emojis per category. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah. So what I've settled on is emojis on the groups only, right? Minimal use of emojis. Mm-hmm. And it has to be before. And it's emoji space group name mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah for me it has to be before but i can have as many emojis as i want in every category <laughs> but it's funny because i was talking to i was talking to to my friend brooke who's the admin of the the fans group uh shout out to brooke and she was she's an emojis after the category name person oh. and so she we had a big old argument about it on facebook it was pretty funny and uh she pointed out she's like well if you do well mul- because i was like it has to be before so it all lines up right and she's like well if you do multiple emojis it doesn't line up anyway and now every time i look at my budget i'm like oh gosh you're right <laughs> like it, it's messing with me it's messing with me already so uh i'm not sure i'm not sure what i'm gonna do i might, might have to experiment a little bit we'll see okay i just had to <laughs> actually I'll change my mind my- on that i don't know I had to double check my budget for a second. I was like, are they really before or do I have them after? But they're before. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You got to like visualize it sometimes. One thing that I picked up from a comment, uh, I think it was on the episode about rule three, uh, the idea of having a few categories that you can flexibly move money between. Like one person, I think they said they have like a fun money group and they have a bunch of categories for you know, entertainment and eating out and you know well they had a, like a lot more specifics that they spend money on and they said i don't really care i just want to spend you know a certain amount of money on fun stuff and if i have one month where i spend more money on entertainment and less money on dining out i don't really care and so they, they can freely move money between that between the categories or among ah. the categories in that group right does that make sense it does yeah and boy that would take out a lot of guilt right it, you know if you have an yeah. eating out category you overspend and you're like all right looks like i'm covering this with auto maintenance money or something like that it just doesn't feel right but if it's mm-hmm. coming from another category that is you know fun no big deal yeah, I think it's I think it's something we do pretty naturally because when you do need to cover overspending or move money, you usually go to those you have some go to categories that you go yeah. to, but this kind of puts it in one group where you know that was that's gonna be the first place you look and you don't have to feel guilty about just moving money because ultimately you're gonna meet your goals because you have a set amount for fun money, right? Yep. And then you kinda of break it down further. So you kinda of have the best of both worlds because you have the granularity of okay, this is generally how much I want to spend on eating out on entertainment on some hobby you know whatever it is but you also have the flexibility of just saying you know overall i want to spend this amount on fun stuff and i can move it around freely without without even really thinking about it and i thought that was a really cool idea. that's actually how i uh that's what i do with all my overspending because my category mm-hmm. my group structure is um themed so a group for car expenses home right. expenses, uh, entertainment. So if there's overspending in auto, you know, on gas or something like that, well, I'm taking it from another auto category. Yeah. You know, that's a funny thing we talked about way back when we talked about category structure, you talked about the theme thing. And I've, I, I told you, like, I'm not, I'm still not super happy with my groups. I feel like I'll have a lot of groups that are really large and it's hard to find categories, you know? Yeah. And I was thinking about doing a theme. I still haven't done it. It takes an awful lot for me to to make a big change to my budget like that. I don't know why. Yes, it does. Maybe I'm just afraid. Because <laughs> <laughs> it took me it took me like a year to finally do a fresh start. Right. We we'll get more into so, this with with the inside I'm jokes. Set in my ways. Yeah, but this is a theme for you definitely over the past two years. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll get around to it. Uh, I mean, 2025. Yeah, and I like don't do it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna have to think about that. Uh maybe I'll do it in a year or so. Maybe I won't. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Another thing that I've learned over the past two years is how much wine abbers love 
their categories. Oh, yeah. I just, I, I never knew. I mean, we keep putting episode after episode out talking about categories and, and folks love it. And it makes sense, right? Because mm -hmm. they're customizing that budget to be so they can see their life in the budget. And so it does, it's, it's really important of how you, uh, you know, categorize or organize the groups and the categories underneath it and, you know, what they look like with emojis and all that. So yeah, it's been fun to kind of, you know, force myself to dive into categories and just really think a little bit more deeply about those. I think, yeah, that's the, we find kind of found that's the key thing. I mean, just look at this episode. I feel like we talked about categories like the whole time, right? Cause, yeah. and like finding the right names for every single thing. And then what's, I think what's great about it, <laughs> assuming that you love changing it all the time is it changes all the time because your life changes. Right. And so you're never really finished. Yeah. So it's kind of, if you enjoy the work of actually making your budget reflect your life, the, the joy of it is that work never ends, right? It just keeps going and, and you can, your budget morphs and changes along with you. And that's kind of fun. And it keeps you engaged in that budget. Like I love when mm -hmm. you create a new category, put a target on that. And you're like, all right, I'm on this mission to fund this category. We just, uh, create a new category to get a tree removed. And we're really excited about oh, removing yeah. this tree because it's going to open up the yard in so many ways. And so we have some ideas of, of what we want to do. And yeah, I loved creating that category and creating the plan to save, to get that tree removed. <sighs> yeah, I need, I'm, I'm less excited about it, Ernie, but I need to create a category for a tree removal myself because there's one tree, it's sitting right next to my pool and it is dead as a doornail. Um, ah. <laughs> it needs to come down. It, it, I had one year where there were no leaves at the top, but there were like two little twigs coming out of the end that, were, that had leaves, you know? And I was like, yeah, okay, well, maybe it's still kicking. Maybe it's just got sick or something. And maybe it'll come back next year. Next year rolls around and nothing. And there's like mushrooms growing out of it. It's done. And I'm, it's very sad because it was a nice tree. Yeah. So, but you it's need gonna to fall get that over thing sooner down. or later and yeah right. so we need you to get that thing prevent down. future problems <laughs> yeah yeah and, and, and now i've said really it on the internet so doing. the insurance knows that i know about it so because <laughs> <laughs> so. your insurance agent definitely watches budget nights. oh yeah of course <laughs> anyway all right anything else uh that you have been yeah one thing that came up when i was thinking about this uh you remember we did an episode we talked about lifestyle creep. It wasn't the whole episode. I think it was like a open Q and a kind of like we had yeah. like questions of tips and trips or tri tricks or something like that. And somebody asked how to avoid lifestyle creep. I had kind of a hot take where I said, if you are budgeting with YNAB and you're doing the thing and you're paying attention, lifestyle creep isn't a thing, right? Because you don't have the creep part of it, which is, which is like kind of the insidious nature where you say, um, you don't notice it happening, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was pretty sure of that hot take. And then you said, I think you said something like, I think you never really know for sure if you are, are experiencing lifestyle creep or not. And that just really okay. got me thinking. I think that's really true. I thought that was a really interesting thing. It's it's not, uh, you know, it's not something that you can always put your your finger on, but you can do your best to avoid it just by being intentional, right? And so, yeah, I just keep thinking about that. It just keeps coming around. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but <laughs> it's, it's, of course, <laughs> I know. Right? <laughs> this is, this is, I'm not sure I'm actually going to make any changes to my budget. No, no, but I think I think it's it's changed my thinking a little bit about it. And said, you know what? Yeah, maybe I should think about, or maybe it's you know maybe it's okay to just kind of sit in the. I'm not. I can't really know for sure, but it's okay. You know. Yeah. So I, I yeah, I know for me, I've just settled on a place where as long as I'm not always saying yes or always yeah. saying no, like somewhere in between healthy mm -hmm. balance. Okay. Good enough for me. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's a really good place to be. All right. We also wanted to talk about some inside jokes, some, some funny things that have come up over the past couple of years. Uh, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and start with that, Ernie? What are some, what are some things that just make well, you laugh? Well, your, your appliance category, <laughs> yes. right? I mean, my goodness, how long has your refrigerator been leaking? I mean, that it, floor has got to be destroyed by now. I don't really want to pull the refrigerator out and look because, uh, it's probably <laughs> not the best. I have a towel in front of the refrigerator. It's fine. It's <laughs> okay. Okay. I do have. A couple. I do have. I do have a category with money in it 
for a new refrigerator. I just need to shop. And I hate shopping for things but like remember, this. But <laughs> remember, didn't forever you have just the category and then you oh, had like 20 yeah. bucks in it? No, I haven't. I, <laughs> it, just, it wasn't. Well, it wasn't for. It was a true expense category for appliances in general. Um, okay. And I did. <laughs> I still am not funding it. I paid off my house and did a fresh start and increased a bunch of categories, and I still didn't put any money toward the appliance category. So, is this still there? Did I even did I get rid of it? I'm gonna I'm gonna look. This is how little I yeah, it's right there. Yep, it's called appliances. Had zero dollars in it. So, you know, <laughs> um, I don't really. I I'm not gonna do it. But it's it's. But I'm still gonna at this you point. Know what? Maybe I should just delete that category right here, right now. No. Nope. Oh wow. Are you I, sure? I'm, I kind of want you to keep it. Well, this is what's funny. Like, I do not want to fund it. I haven't funded it like since before we started Budget Nerds. So like it's probably been there for longer than two years. Um, but I also don't want to get rid of it. Well, that's weird. So how are you gonna get a new fridge? Well, I like, have what are you gonna run that through? I'll have to, I'll run it through appliances probably, or I could do home maintenance, but I, I feel like appliances is better. Cause it's, it's not like I'm getting a new roof or something. I'm like, it's, it's more of like I'm buying a thing. Right. So yeah, I guess that's the category that I would run things through. I have a separate category in my wish farm for the refrigerator. So, um, yeah, probably what I'll do is I'll run it through the refrigerator category, delete it and merge it with the appliance category. And then I can say I funded it because I put a bunch of money toward it. So there you go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Well, I'm glad you have a plan that you're not going to stick to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ernie. I appreciate that. <laughs> I think. But, uh, I I love your appliance category. Uh, yeah, you know what? Just for the lulls, I should probably just leave it where it is because it's just... <laughs> Oh, it's just so silly. All right. Uh, one of my favorite recurring inside jokes, which is not true, but in my mind's eye, it is true, is the idea of Ernie doing his monthly rollover budget routine, sitting in a bubble bath <laughs> with his computer that hopefully won't drop in the bath and cause problems. <laughs> yeah, I talk about how that end of the month rollover is a very special time for me, right? Like I, you know, I'm by myself, an adult beverage in hand, so funny. you know, things are quiet and peaceful. And then somehow it's evolved into, you know, me slipping into the tub. And <laughs> I think it started with like, I was like, oh, do you like light some candles? Because you said it's like a special time. <laughs> it's like peaceful. You're lighting candles, playing some music. And then like, yeah, naturally you're in the, in the bubble bath as well. So <laughs> just the idea of it sitting in the bubble bath. I mean, you should probably do it one day just to let me know what it's like. Hopefully you don't electrocute yourself. But, you know, there you go. That would be a great <laughs> post for one of our our social channels man yeah, just, i could just be sure you have plenty hey, of bubbles in the bath there ernie but uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course <laughs> that would be a great post <laughs> i would make them pay me for it right oh there you bucks. Go. <laughs> and this is yours you can do whatever you want with it no thanks ernie <laughs> then you all can right add that to your uh, budget in the bubble bath there you go. <laughs> nobody what wants else that. inside <laughs> joke um oh this is kind of in the theme of, you know, saying something is cool, Ben, but not doing it. Uh, the the series shortcuts. Oh, that was recent. That was like the last recent, episode, The tips right? and tricks. The tips and tricks, yeah. Right, where you can just take your card, hold it up to your iPhone, and it brings up the added transaction screen. Yeah. And people, I mean, people's minds were blown in the comments. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, I don't actually do it, though. <laughs> It's super cool. Yeah, you were like, "Do you use this?" And I'm like, "No, I've ne I've never <laughs> once, never once have I actually used it because it's actually faster to just open up YNAB by tapping on the screen where it's on my dock on my phone." But uh, here's a funny thing though, because I use my actual debit card to demonstrate it, and I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I showed all my numbers on my debit card. <laughs> <laughs> on the YouTube, I actually had to cancel that debit card and get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so people didn't steal my money so thank you everybody because it was up for like a week before i realized that like i showed everybody my and i'm sorry so i, I should have edited stealing. that out <laughs> thank you for not I stealing all I'm my just... money Every, everybody that watched it <laughs> so you can go back you can find uh, out what my numbers were but they're the, it's 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 dead though you can't steal any of my money because that, that that debit card is canceled and cut up and uh i got a new one so no worries <laughs> it's very go. annoying to get a new debit card 
I got a, I had like all these subscriptions that were like your card doesn't work, and I'm like, oh man. So, anyways, it was so that mistake. All I had to do was turn it the other way so you could see the number. Anyways, well, you I weren't planning on it, right? You were on the spot, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so. But it was pretty funny. Yeah, but yeah, and I, I don't use. I, I have all these cool, this cool series shortcut stuff that I never use. So there you go. Um. Yeah. Here's another inside joke. Mortgage escrow is the worst. <laughs> they always get it wrong. Remember we talked about that. So this is something we talked about. I don't know. I remember when we were talking about. Well, I think we talked about it multiple times in multiple episodes. Yeah. Where you know, so escrow. If you don't know, escrow is where you have to put money into an account that the mortgage company holds. And you have to add it on top of your mortgage payment. And it sits in an account to pay home insurance and taxes, like real estate taxes. And ah, it just drives me nuts because it's, it's, so, it's so like paternalistic, you know? Like the mortgage company's like, oh, we can't trust you to pay your taxes. <laughs> so you have to pay us to pay our, your, and we'll pay your taxes. And I'm just like, bro, don't you know, I'm a, I'm a budget nerd. Like I can handle this. I can, and I can handle it better than them because every year <laughs> they're like, we screwed up again. We don't have enough money to pay your taxes because we didn't tell you to put enough in there. And it's like, yeah, because you're dummies and you're not good at this. And, <laughs> or anyway. they send you a check. We have too much. Here you oh, go. Well, that never happened to me. <laughs> oh, that happened to me. And then the next year it's like, you don't get that. Or they say, Oh, we're taking more. <laughs> like, come on yeah yeah it's like come on guys figure this out it's not that hard you have one job <laughs> just, just divide by 12 guys like <laughs> <laughs> five anyway. by 12 <laughs> it's like why is it hard? i get it i mean yeah the, the amount changes whatever blah blah, blah. but like i was actually really proud of myself last year i took control back of escrow and oh yeah pretty much nailed it you know nice. here's a number you know make you made a couple educated guesses divided by 12 and uh yeah i'm sure my this year i'll be way off and i'll be are, like my real estate taxes are due in october and i've taken it taken back control and since i paid off the mortgage so i'm pretty excited about that i'll have to see if i <laughs> it'd be pretty embarrassing if i get it wrong and then, <laughs> then I'm, and i've been complaining this <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but let, uh, let me make the mistake i don't want you like it, it's fine if right. i make the mistake like okay i made the mistake it's more annoying if the bank makes the mistake and because they wouldn't yeah just let me make my own mistake all right yeah if Anyways. i make the mistake i'm gonna come up with some sort of excuse right and it won't be a big deal <laughs> yeah well it was, it was you know it was totally normal this time because reasons <laughs> anyway. yeah mortgage just grows the worst all right maybe one last inside joke Okay. This isn't really an inside joke, but it's just a truth that we're horrible at intros. <laughs> I mean, how many episodes have we had botched intros oh, at the end no. of it? You guys didn't and even I think notice. the worst the worst was last episode. <laughs> we had we'll like a whole a, minute a of that <laughs> at some point. Yeah, we had we Well, <laughs> it's on the last episode. Oh, is it? It's at the end. Oh, it just yeah, came out. I put that whole thing just came out today. Oh, so see, but see, Ernie does the does the editing. A little behind the scenes here. Actually, we used to both do the editing, but then Ernie took it over. Thank you, Ernie. He says all the yeah. work for us, okay. guys. I just want to say, past two years, Ernie has driven the ship on budget nerds. Like I'm here, I do most of the talking because I, I talk too much. Uh, but <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be honest. But er, Ernie's the one that's driving the ship, and he's making it happen. So so claps for Ernie. If you like budget nerds, oh. that for Ernie. Well, so, thank you. you and go. well, we should also give claps to Ashley, right? She's oh, been yeah, driving Ashley. the YouTube ship and has helped us a ton and been so probably much. our biggest fan. And then there's also Trent doing the podcast. He's been yeah. fantastic as well. So, so many so wonderful people you. making this happen. It's, it's great to work with such a great team. So it really is. And of course, all of you guys, all the comments, all your, all your ideas. I mean, it drives, it drives the ship. It really does. So I appreciate you guys so much fun being in a community with other budget nerds never thought i would find this group in my life but here we are here we are here we are it's there 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 are dozens of us (laughs) there you go all right well we should probably talk about the giveaway ernie uh let's let's what are we giving away let's talk about it we're giving away budget nerd stickers right here oh look at that it's gorgeous it's beautiful it's blurry uh it's well yeah uh so focusing a little bit so if you guys are listening uh to the podcast version um there is a budget nerd sticker and it you know it looks like our logo it's blue it's purple it says budget nerds i mean what more do you need so uh check that out we have a link right that we're gonna drop 
And the yes. first 500 people who click on that link, put in their info, we'll send you a sticker. And there you go. So don't waste your time right now. Go to the description, either of the podcast or the YouTube video. Sign up because once the 500, we get that, you know, that form is going to shut down. So, yep. And we're never giving stickers away ever again. <laughs> no, we, we might. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like YouTubers are always saying that once in a lifetime. We're never giving these these T-shirts away again. And then they totally do. So, <laughs> I don't know. We yeah, might do it again. I'm sure but... we'll be doing this again. But, <laughs> but you can get the first edition. Exactly. Get the first edition of the Budget Nerd sticker right now. Click that link. And that'll celebrate two years. And thank you guys so much for uh, making this such a wonderful experience in my life and in Ernie's life. It's been been really fun. Yeah, thank you so much. And we'd love to hear from you too. You know, if you're watching the YouTube video, write in the comments, maybe tell us how your budget has changed over the yes. past two years of Budget Nerds or however long you've been watching. And if you're listening to the podcast, you can write in directly to us, budgetnerds at youneedabudget.com. Q budget nerds jingle. Yes. Bum, bum, bum. Budget nerds at you need a budget dot com. You hear that? <laughs> that was written by budget nerd Calix Jacobson. They Yay, wrote Calix. that for us. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so, good. so much. Because a couple episodes ago, we were talking about the email address, and then you on the spot came up with the jingle. <laughs> jingle. Mm-hmm. Right, right there, and and Calix took that and was like, "All right, I let's just, let's I've, up it a notch." It's so great; it makes me so happy. So, thank you so much, Calix, for that. Uh, anytime we mention budget nerds at youneedabudget dot com, we'll have to play that jingle. So, there you go. Thanks so much, Calix. All right, well, should we talk about some YNAB wins? Let's do it. All right, so my YNAB win comes from Crystal, and this win was posted on the yearly rollover in YNAB, so that was one of our first videos Mm -hmm. almost two years ago. I was inspired by this video to do a fresh start, my first since moving from YNAB 4 back in 2016. I've been tempted before, but the thoughts of losing all the data and history kept holding me back. You sold me, though, with the payee cleanup. It's been really refreshing, and when combined with the 34-day challenge, I think I might be able to finally get a month ahead. Yay. Congrats, Crystal. Yay. One, congrats on being super, super nerdy. Going into the payee <laughs> cleanup, like the epitome of a budget nerd. So I love that. Yes. But then doing that fresh start, allowing yourself to almost look at your money with fresh eyes and realize, oh, maybe if I shift some things around and do this more money challenge, I can get that month ahead. So that's super cool. Yeah. I was looking back on old episodes in preparation for this episode. And I saw that comment from Crystal. Must have missed it back in the day. And uh, yeah, uh, I had to grab it because the pay. If you ever open up that pay management window in the web app, you are a true budget nerd. <laughs> I'll just say <laughs> it's probably like I would be like I would guess like maybe like one percent of white appers ever open that up because <laughs> it's totally only the most true budget nerds care about that. So <laughs> so there you go. All right, my white app win is from Debbie, and this is on the saving money as a homeowner. Uh, budget nerds episode that was back when i was on paternity leave and aaron was a guest and debbie says we paid off our mortgage early yay debbie such a great feeling having it paid off so saving now for remodel or selling and purchasing a one level home good for you debbie you're a lot like me because i paid off the mortgage and now i'm saving for remodeling i I put off a lot of stuff (laughs) for a long (laughs) time to make that happen so this is great debbie i'm so excited for you Yeah. Awesome. Congrats. All right, folks. That's a wrap. Thanks again for the past two years. Remember to sign up for the sticker. We want you to get one of those and Mm -hmm. be sure to sound off in the comments or email us at budgetnerds at youneedabudget.com and let us know how the budget's changed over the last two years. So love to hear from you. I'm really excited to see those comments. Happy budgeting, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye.